Right. Uh, welcome to tonight's meeting of the Bishop Stoke, Fair Oak and Horton Heath Local Area Committee, which is being broadcast and recorded by Microsoft Teams Live. I am Councillor Nick Coulbury. I'm chair of this committee and will be conducting the meeting tonight. During the meeting, you'll hear from members of the committee who are on your screen now. And I'll just refer them. Uh, Councillor Louise Parker-Jones, Councillor Jim Tidridge, Councillor Rob Rushton, Councillor Ray Dean and Councillor Michelle Marsh in no particular order. Also present are the officers of the Eastleigh Borough Council who are now shown on the screen. Uh, Dave Foster has had to climb uh, to um, is ill, so he can't be with us, but um, he Helen, I think it is, has come in to help and uh, everybody else is there. Uh, they will present their reports that have been written and provide support for the committee tonight. Now, it's just possible that we'll experience a connection problem. Uh, in that case, this event will be paused. If a councillor loses connection or joins later, I'll ask them to introduce or reintroduce themselves. In the unlikely event that I lose connection, uh, the vice chairman, Councillor Rob Rushton, will take over. Now, the first item on the agenda is apologies. I don't think we have any apologies, so I don't need to ask for them because we're all here. That's good. The next item is declarations of interest. Do members have any declarations of interest they wish to make? And if so, could they please indicate now and when called, please state the nature and reason for their interest? I don't think anybody is indicating they've got an interest, so we will move on. The next item is the minutes. These have been circulated in advance. Uh, can I sign the minutes of the meeting on the 25th of November as a true record? Do I have a proposer? Councillor Marsh, thank you. And a seconder? Councillor Rushton, thank you. All agreed. Could councillors unmute to signal agreement? Yeah, agreed. 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 Thank agreed. you all. The next item on the agenda is public participation. Uh, tonight, there's nobody put their names down to speak on on uh, generally, so there'll be no public participation on this occasion. Right, the next item is the chair's announcement. Now, this is uh, something to which I started thinking about last, uh, well, a couple of days ago. And um, two, two things have rarely become uh, sort of jumped my mind. The first was a pretty disastrous episode on North Wellington Lane, where a pile of trees were cut down to make a road approaching the roundabout. I've tried to get to the bottom of this and I have at last done so. This was done on the basis of a planning permission given two years ago, I think, for the development of the One Horton Heath project. Since then, the, the uh, planning permission has been changed by effectively Hans County Council, who rerouted the, the uh, line of the road. And notwithstanding the fact that that meant the cutting down the trees. So I thought that that was going to be something that we really needed to push forward. This, however, has been overtaken by an even worse episode in Woodhouse Lane, where even more trees were cut down, again by a contractor of Hansel County Council. He says it's by mistake, or they say it's a mistake. Um, I know that, that this is going to be taken forward by the borough and the um, and, and, and the borough and the county councillors. And so I think that I don't need to take this forward very anything further. I appreciate that uh, nobody is happy with this and I'm looking at the faces of the councillors and I can't have it. I can see thunder coming in, in every direction and I'm, I'm not surprised. It's absolutely deserved. It's just not right. The next thing is that I, I thought, well, look, we're actually beginning to get, you know, with, with coronavirus beginning to be attacked properly and the vaccines beginning to, to, to come through and to work, 
we're going to get back to normal. But what does normal mean? And I got, um, I, I, I sort of suddenly thought, well, you know, the traffic has been the major difference during this uh, lockdown and indeed all the impressions. And in some respects, it's been worse because as there's been less traffic, it's moved faster. But what we're going to see now, though, is traffic recovery. And, uh, and uh, it's been one of the um, one of the uh, frustrations of this, that every time you try and get some traffic done, dealt with a traffic problem, whether it's on a planning permission or a, a particular application, you're always pushed back by Hans uh, County Council. Um, I remember discussing uh, the personal development with them and saying, look, we need a pedestrian crossing across Mortimer's Lane. No, you can't have it because, because, because lots of technicalities, but no understanding people actually need to cross to get to walk and walk on a pavement rather uh, uh, down Mortimer's Lane. Similarly, they can't get into um, the shops very easily, either in Botley Road or the single shop there or the or the shops in, in Sandy Lane. And so that's I, I found really frustrating. And I think that the Hans County Council need to change their view. I've also um, had a word uh, indirectly a word, an email. And I'm grateful to the independents in Bishopstoke who've provided me with a long list of things that they're equally frustrated about. And uh, so I thought the right answer to this was to, for us to get a motion before the Hans County Council and saying, look, you've got to up your game on this. Um, I didn't quite put it like that, I think, because uh, someone got there and made me behave myself. But it, that's what it that's what it amounts to. You have to up your game. And thank you, Laura, for displaying this on the um, on the screen. It has been sent rather late to um, committee members, so my apologies for that. Uh, but this is the um, the proposed. I'm proposing this as an emergency motion. Uh, for for to address the count the Hans County Council say up your game let's get this traffic managed and put people before traffic flow so that's all I've got to say um, I do need a seconder I'm happy to second that chair thank you Louise thank you um, oh sorry Councillor Parker Jones <laughs> it's all right um, and do you want to say anything? Um, only very quickly that I absolutely um, agree that our concerns about traffic have not been addressed. There's been many issues we've raised recently, um, whether it's the lack of school crossings near um, the junior school in Bishop Stoke and the problems we've had there. We've had we, you know, the problems with Bishop Stoke Road, which impacts not just Bishop Stoke, most certainly Fair Oak, because that knock on effect, you know, four or five years later, it's still not being addressed. Um, we're still waiting and it's so, so dangerous. And I think it's all been thrown into sharp relief, as you said, because of COVID. Um, I, I believe um, Councillor Tidridge would also like to comment as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Parker Jones. Councillor Tidridge. Yes, i um, just like to thank um, Councillor Caldry for including quite a few of the items that um, I highlighted as being of concern, particularly for residents of Bishopstoke. There is, however, one um, concern I've got about item D. Um, if the intention is to reduce HGVs, can I, um, on Mortimer's Lane, south of Knoll, south of Knoll Lane, um, could we um, phrase that so that we're not saying weight restrictions, we're saying restricting HGVs, whether that through weight, height, length, um, whatever, because there's a whole host of reasons you can do that. Also, I'd like added to that to item D, um, Bishop Stoke Lane. Yeah. Bishop Stoke Lane is the very narrow lane, I'm sure some of you know, which connects the north part of Bishop Stoke with Cold and Common. Um, it's the lane which laughably in the draft of the local plan that the planning inspector considered was proposed as a bus route. Anybody who knows the lane will know that HGVs um, are not supposed to use it. There's a sign up saying unsuitable for HGVs, but HGVs are not actually banned from using it. And that's despite the fact that, particularly at the cold and common end, 
um, it goes down to single lane with some sharp bends. At the Bishopstoke end, even where it is two lanes, there is a very blind corner, uh, which is difficult to navigate anyway as a cyclist with um, cars overtaking you anyway, um, without the additional pressures being put on by potentially buses or lorries, etc. Bishopstoke Lane has been used increasingly due to the large amounts of development which have, which have been put in place in North Bishopstoke, used by a lot of commuters trying their, trying, their, trying their level best to avoid the traffic of Eastleigh and using it as a cut through to get to Winchester um, and points north. Um, also, I'm particularly concerned about Bishopstoke Lane because we, 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 we tend to see that when, it, when there's a problem on the motorway, Bishopstoke Lane gets used as a rat run. You've got all the construction traffic happening for One Horton Heath and other developments which could well end up going down there and because it's only listed as being unsuitable not as prohibited there is always that risk of being used um, we've seen it being used by the milk lorry a few times recently um, when it's been unable to make its way along stoke stoke, stoke park park road in its um preferred route because of um, inconsiderate parking by the large numbers of people using stoke park woods which is a major concern um, but basically what I'm saying is Bishopstoke Lane should be added to point D, but also it should, be, it should be reworded so that it's describing the outcome we want to see, i.e. no HGVs or large vehicles, um, as opposed to specifying something which might fall over on the um, technical, technicalities. Does that make sense? Well, for, for my part, I, I welcome both amendments. I think they're, they're improvements. Thank you for that. Um, uh, Laura, have you got those amendments down? I have, Chair. It will just need to be seconded as an amendment and then that becomes the substantive motion for you to vote on. I will just furiously amend it in the background while you uh, do that and then you can tell me if, that, if you're happy with it. I'm quite happy to second the amendment. Thank you, Ray. Uh, thank you, Councillor Dean. Uh, does anyone else want to speak on this motion? Councillor Marsh. Um, I, I really wanted to just thank you for bringing this to us this evening. Um, I think it's really important that we are looking at this motion because so many of our residents um, believe that it's our responsibility to make the changes to the highway and their frustration is with us as Eastleigh Borough councillors. Um, and I think it's important that they know that we share their frustrations and actually we spend a lot of time fighting to get these amendments made and these improvements to our road. But again and again, we're stopped by Hampshire County Council. And I think it's really important that um, we ask Hampshire to step forward and to protect our community because these these changes and amendments that we're asking for are all about the safety of our residents. So I'm really grateful to you for bringing this forward. So thank you. Thank you. So I think we then move to a vote. Um, I have a second chair. I've just got the amended wording. If you just give me one second and then you can tell me that if you're happy. It should be on your screen now. I'm happy to propose that amendment. Well done, Nora. That's great. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. So that's the substantive motion now. Can you just have a second? Sorry, Chair. Oh, yeah, I'm that's me, Nora. Oh. oh, brilliant. <laughs> sorry, I was typing. I didn't see. Sorry. <laughs> um, all those in favour, just say, unmute and say. Aye. In favour. In favour. I think that's everyone. So thank you very much. Um, Right, we now um, we now move on to the traffic regulation orders. Uh, councillors must be present for the duration of the item in order to be able to vote. Um, it, to make this process clearer, we're going to take each traffic regulation order as a separate item and vote on that in order to ensure that everyone's able to, every position is clear. But before I do that, um, I'm going to ask uh, Barbara Thomas, the traffic engineer, to present her report. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, this report is um, a pre-recorded um, PowerPoint presentation, so I'm just going to start it. Uh,
Are you having trouble, Barbara? Ah, uh, right. Sorry, it's it's playing here, but let me let me just let's just try again. So Laura, can you just tell me, explain, I'll share the screen and then. Yeah, I've got it, but it's not playing. It's just showing as your slide deck and your main slide. Right, OK. So I should just click on the uh, PowerPoint presentation and play the slideshow, is that right? Yeah. Let's try again then. Barbara, it might be that you need to check whether you've allowed your computer to share the sound. So just before you, it might you might need to unshare it, and then as you're about to sel you select share, but before you put the presentation up, there's a you click the button to say share sound. Right, that might be it then. Um, ah, there we are. Right, it's now saying it can't share this. Barbara, it may be your internet speed. We did have this the other evening with one of the planning presentations and we had to run them through with the slides looking like they did now um, because we couldn't get it to play from the, if it's got a lot of images in it, it, it sometimes just completely slows down in the evening. Um, it's not playing anything here. Chair, if, it, if we can't get this to play, it may be that Mark, can you perhaps speak to Barbara offline and we move on to the finance report and come back to the TROs? I think that's a good idea. Let's do that. Is that OK, Mark? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, that should be fine. I'll give it uh, a Barbara, if, if you can share your mobile number with Mark um, directly in a chat to him and he'll give you a ring and see if we can figure out what's happening and we'll move on to the finance report and then come back to yours so we can get the presentation to play. I think that's the best we can do. Um, so we move on to the finance report and can I ask Andy Thompson to introduce the report? And um, fine, Andy. Hi, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, as you all know, um, uh, quite a lot of the committees I introduce a finance report um, it's going to be no shock to everyone that this is probably significantly more than uh, we usually approve within uh, finance reports. Uh, in no small part this is also quite a lot to do the infrastructure funding statement that as a council we are now obliged to publish to show our expenditure and what we hold which include developer contributions. Uh, also, what's happened quite a lot recently is we've had quite a lot of developments, certainly in the Fair Oak area, that have come on board and some of the developer contributions have now come to fruition, uh, which was left with uh, this committee starting to hold quite a considerable amount of unallocated fundings, which have just, just pretty much come, come to, the, to the fore right now. So uh, again, uh, this is quite significant allocations within this report and in no small part that that's sort of some of the reasons um, as you'll appreciate in here there are 13 I believe 13 or 14 recommendations I think it's 13 14 yeah 13 recommendations one notification 13 recommendations so I'm going to sort of do a whistle stop tour over all of them and do a little brief bit on each and every one of them 
obviously happy to take questions on them and, and hope that you have obviously read the report before this. So um, again, I'm just going to go through them pretty much in order. First one is a significant amount is nearly just over half a million pound. That's going to be allocated to the Memorial Hall and Glebe Meadow project. Um, Bishop Stoke is, is really massively lacking in some of the community facilities and this is probably the number one priority uh, for the local area committee. So this is allocating some significant money to move that project forward. We are just about, we've just done the and we're going to be moving forward with that project uh, in the coming year with the aim, everything according to plan to hopefully have a planning application for that by the end of the year. The second one is an interesting one. This is about nearly a quarter of a million pound and this is allocated for a community integration officer. This comes predominantly from the Pembers farm um, development. And again, we, we've had a lot of development in this area and we're getting a lot of new communities and certainly when we're working with the parish council. They often get a lot of the new uh, residents who come in who don't um, sort of know a lot of things about the community, they want to get involved in local local facilities, local volunteer groups as well. So we believe that we really want to have a, a development post that is going to be um, part of uh, the council to really work of, of over a number of years with a small budget to work on some community integration projects. The exact rollout of that, if it's going to be sitting uh, with the council or the parish council or combination of that, is to be decided. Um, but certainly uh, members here will be very, very much involved in in the brief and how that is formulated should it be approved third one's interesting one um this is actually fitching valley country park it does sit just on the boundary just outside of the um of the bishop's oak Ferrick and, and horton heath uh, local area committee and if this were to be approved it would need um approval from the developer because the detail in the section 106 document is um, it, it doesn't quite, um, we believe as a council, allow for it to be spent in this way. So if it was approved, it would be pending developer approval. And this is quarter of a million pounds just shy of again for Itchin Valley Country Park. This is a, um, a district wide facility and certainly many, um, many of the residents within the Bifar community do use this facility and again it's to help uh, with their development plan there and extend some of the pathways and extend some of the facilities they have there. Moving down uh, another project um, so we'll be aware at New Century Park uh, 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 is the former scout site um, and again we're looking to allocate nearly uh, just shy of £160,000 for the enhancements of landscape in the surrounds and to support the um, establishment of a not-for-profit community cafe and social enterprise that's just going to link to the play area on there. And this is some, something working with the parish that they're very, very keen to do. Moving down recommendation five, um, this is um, the public art. As you will know, with every different contribution that goes towards public art, we've been very fortunate with some of the public art that's been delivered by the parish and elements and Sorry, through internally Andy, at Edinburgh Council. Andy, your connection's horrendous. You're dropping out quite a lot and you're sounding like you're a robot. <laughs> OK, just give me one second. I'll just see if I can hardwire myself in. <laughs> Andy Robot, that's not. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry about this. Give me, give me one second. I'll just see if I can is anyone else on the internet? There are some advantages in meeting in person, aren't there? So, is it okay now, or is it? It is better. You're looking a little bit clearer than you were a second uh, ago. Okay. Um, shall I give it another try? If it does, I will try and hardwire her in uh, in a minute. So, um, okay. Um, Sorry, was it number five? Um, do say if it is, and I will try and get a, uh, a cable in for my uh, router to go direct in. Um, the um, public art strategy. So as I said before, uh, we have done odd projects before, which have been slightly in a piecemeal fashion uh, and discussing with internal um, colleagues uh, from the, the policy department and working and seeing it work in other areas. We want to join up a lot of this funding and put together a public art strategy um, for the BIFO area. So obviously where um, 
um, allocate it. What we're looking to do is to have a very much more of a joined up approach. So each of the public art pieces talk to each other and we have more of a theme across the area. Certainly moving forward, we want to link that to the Horton Heath development as well. That was number five. Uh, number six, again, this is on our, our local area action plan it's been a project that we've been working through for a, quite a couple of years this is the community extension project uh, at st uh, paul's church at the wellsmead area of the of the uh, village in bishop stoke this is to create uh, an extended community uh, facility for all to use at the church um, this has had planning and approval and we are hoping to um, move this forward to actual development um, in the summer next year and we will look forward to bring that to fruition so that's just a final bit of allocation for that project uh number seven is a bit more of an interesting one uh this is for money uh, allocated to the stoke stokewood surgery development uh people appreciate should the horton heath um, project come on board and already uh, the numbers of um, patients actually registered the surgery are far in excess of where they probably should be so it's very much in need of an extension interesting part for this as well is although this committee does allocate it we are reliant on the um the clinical commissioning group to advise where that money is spent so again this is the uh, a project that they've brought forward and from they've brought forward that they're suggesting how that money should be spent but it's for approval by uh moving forward to uh recommendation number eight um i'm sure you'll all be aware of seen in the last year with hampshire county council um a lot of libraries were closed across the county and um one of them unfortunately uh was highlighted was the fair oak um, community library um the parish can are looking to set up um, a local community group to run this on their behalf and I mean certainly in need of funding to bring that building up to um, the acceptable standard it needs to to run this um, it's going to be also to try and keep the library open to a certain extent with the volunteers but also to create a community hub move Four. Nine, a bit more of an obvious one. This is uh, nearly just shy of £53,000 allocated, allocated to the improvement of uh, various um, play areas within the Bishop Stoke um, parish. Um, some of them are coming to pretty much the end of their useful life and looking a bit tired. So looking to use that funding to, to upgrade some of those facilities. Um, item number 10, um, that's uh, probably a little bit more obvious given the earlier um, conversations and recommendations that were put forward in regards to Hampshire County County. Again, to the health allocations, um, this is, we are allocating £35,000 towards the provision of a new pedestrian crossing on Botley Road, which is near Horton Heath. But again, we are at the beck and call of Hampshire Highways on this. We are reliant on their approval. So whilst we can allocate it to that, um, as was pointed out by the chair earlier on and the committee, the concerns over that. Moving down, um, number 11 uh, is just just over £30,000 allocated for building improvements to the Wise on Youth Facility um, just um, within the area. Again, that building was built in 2007, 2008 and it's starting to look a bit tired in areas. So this £30,000 is there to make some small improvements to that building to keep on top of the maintenance work that's there for that. Item number 12, um, again, this is for um, upgraded play area equipment and facilities. This is for the Church Road play area uh, in Bishop Stoke, it's just at the top of Church Road. Again, another play area that is coming to the end of its useful life. Um, this committee approved some funding for the gates and the entries to it at the uh, the last local area committee and uh, this money again is to work with the play area equipment inside and something again this this, this again we actually cited on a later report in our local area action plan something that's really at the heart of, of what we aim to do as a committee and when we're looking to tackling climate change and looking after countryside very keen to um allocate fourteen thousand pounds just shy of towards the tree corridor project and this comes from the plan e again this finance report in previous um committees has approved money for the planning and the tree corridor report is to create a corridor of trees that stretch across the area 
which will help for improving, obviously, um, looking to climate change in terms of creating more trees, but also the, the wildlife and things that can pass through the trees from one tree to another. And finally, uh, the last one is just um, a note because this was actually detailed in both the Section 106 documents is for the allocation of developer contributions uh, for Pembers uh, Hill and Crowd Hill um, towards to Fair Oak Parish Council to deliver those play areas. Again, apologies, that's quite long. I try, I've, I've probably rushed over quite a few of them, but otherwise I probably could have been speaking all night. So, and again, apologies if I did cut out earlier on, but happy to take any questions or um, concerns on any of those, especially if I've missed out anything, happy to clarify. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I see you've got an invitation to speak. Um, so if we uh, move to questions and debate, I know it's a little probably difficult to separate the two and we will need a proposal and second as we go forward. Um, but uh, Councillor Marsh, you were there first, so we'd like to speak. Thank you, Councillor Col Coldry. Um, I think I'd, I'd like to comment on two of these um, things in particular. Firstly, um, item number two. Um, I just wanted to mention that because initially I had concerns when I read this report, so I did contact the clerk of the parish council who sent me quite a nice briefing about um, with a bit more detail in it um, because I was worried about it being an integration officer and being somebody who goes out to do meet and greet, which is what, it, what I envisaged. Um, and actually, it's far more complex than that. So. Um, Yes, there will be a community development officer. I think this is well needed because particularly because Fair Oak Parish Council has given considerable thought to the amount of development which has been happening in our area and that's in Bishopstoke, Fair Oak and in Horton Heath. So all these areas have impacted and this position will have a positive benefit for all of the whole of our area. Um, so it won't benefit only Pembers Hill, it will be for the whole area because it is a five year project and it isn't only for salaries, it actually includes over £100,000 for projects. So it means that a number of projects which we would want to run as Fair Oak, Bishop Stoke and Horton Heath would be financially viable because of this allocation. So the person would be available to do them as well as run the project. So I was a lot happier with more detail from that. I do have another the statement if anyone wants me to read it out. Um, I really would like to largely um, raise my councillor Marsh just to be clear we are still in questions rather than debate so these well, are statements that are in debate so if we're going to move to that we do need to propose and second and then move into kind of the statements on these just to be clear on the process of where we are. Okay. Um, I think think um, we, we will get to a proposal in a second in a, in a second but um, I think that you know rather than interrupt you just let you let you go on yeah I, I couldn't propose it without some amendments being made to it so I think that's what I'd like to raise so um so I possibly am going into the debate section which I apologize if I am um really my question was about Itchen Valley Country Park because um, my understanding is that Fair Oak, Bishop Stoke and Horton Heath are the only LAC who've been approached for money as a sits in West End. Um, and I am rather uncomfortable with this because this money was from Fair Oak contributions and I therefore feel that these contributions should go to the Fair Oak and Horton Heath and Bishop Stoke community and benefit us directly. So while I understand and a lot of our community do use this facility. Um, maybe that would be a more reasonable ask of the one Horton Heath development, which um, as part of their 106 um, agreement. But I feel very strongly that the Fair Oak money should remain in Fair Oak for the benefit of our residents. So that was what I wanted to say. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I've been hauled up by uh, our democratic services officer for taking this all the wrong way around. Um, so uh, I apologise, but not very much, if you know what I mean. We, we need to get this debate going. Um, can we have a formal proposal on seconding subject to any amendments that put forward? I'm happy to propose it. Sorry, sorry, Chair, could I ask a quick question? Could, of course. Could I ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, 
and it was just to seek some clarification on the Itchen Valley Country Park. So it's just two very quick questions. I think possibly Michelle has covered one of them, which is, has any other local area committee committed the same amount of money as ourselves, excluding obviously um, you the, the um, West Western Committee, committee yeah. because it's actually in there. there okay. um, and the other thing about it was I did notice that it said that we would have, if it was to go ahead, that we would have to seek a, a approval from the developer. So was there another place that was originally intended for this money? That was the, that they're my questions. And then we will, obviously I've got lots of things I would like okay. to debate with you all on this matter, but, but they're, they're, they're the two questions. I think I can answer both questions. You are, Hueb has contributed, but it's in the Hueb area and no other local area committee has contributed. So that's the first one. The second one, as I understand it, this was just a, a allocated, no, sorry, it was agreed to be, the Section 106 agreement was that it would be used for um, open space and countryside, but it didn't say where. And um, uh, so it's, it, it's, it's, assumed to be in the locality, it probably would need amendment. But as uh, I fear it's going in a, in a particular direction, so I don't think we're going to be bothering to ask. Uh, so just chair, I, th I think, yeah, uh, just to clarify on the, just to clarify on, on, on that second part is um, it was an allocation, it was part of the 106 uh, uh, at Castle Parker Johns and for Penders Hill Farm. So um, it wasn't specified exactly where it was from there. Obviously, as you know, we have our CIP list, which we can then cross reference and those, those ones that aren't specific, we can look to move them across. Um, to my knowledge, obviously working on that and working the CIP list, we hadn't specifically identified it as a committee to be allocated at that time. There's been discussions about different things it could be used for, but no formal thing within the area had it done or gone as far as this one has to this stage. If, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. I just wanted to check that yeah. I was right. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Are there any other questions rather than debate? Because anyone wants uh, a debate? No questions. So we have a proposal and seconder, do we? I'm happy to propose that subject to amendments. Yes, yes, of course. And I'm happy to second, Chair. Thank you very much. Subject but, to amendments. Yeah. And um, I think that we'll know one of the amendments soon. But anyway, the next person that's put themselves down to speak is Councillor Tidridge. So can we take that her next? Thank you. Um, I would like to propose an amendment to strike Itchen Valley Country Park from this motion. Um, and yeah, I can see that's that 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 this, this was very much expected. My issues with spending money on Itchen Valley Country Park. Um, are as follows. Firstly, it's not in our area. Secondly, it's not possible to get to, from Pembers Hill to Itchen Valley Country Park, as I'm aware, using public transport. It's quite a long way to walk and it's quite a dangerous bike ride at the moment, especially. Um, the other issue is that it does have its own income streams. It has a car park. It has um, a very large car park. It has um, Go Ape. It has a cafe, it runs events, it is able to generate its own income. Um, we're expecting to fund this as a major attraction. Looking at some of the activities mentioned in um, this item, um, Park Run, for example, is mentioned. Park Run, when it's allowed to happen again, will be using Itchen Valley Country Park. I'm not aware, as a user of Park Run, and I have, I have run there, um, that it needs actually any more investment. It's already a fabulous run. It's a bit of a mud fest, but thoroughly enjoyable. Um, and I'm not aware that it actually requires any more investment to continue being park run. Um, so I'm a bit confused as to why that's mentioned as a, as, as a reason for investment. Um, my other reason for being uncomfortable with it being here is that um, there is um, a area much closer to Pembers Hill which is in desperate need of um, investment, and that's Stoke Park Woods. Um, and Stoke Park Woods, if we go back to the kind of um, principles of a section 106, a section 106 should be to mitigate for the impact of a development on the community. And if we're looking at what people who are moving into Pembers Hill are likely to do, 
yes, they, they are likely to drive, drive to which in Valley Country Park. They're also very likely to walk or cycle to um, Stoke Park Woods. Um, Stoke Park Woods, the paths have been absolutely hammered. Um, all the fencing, all the gates um, are suffering from just the sheer numbers of people using it. Stoke Park Woods used to have some rather enjoyable play equipment, most of which is, has, has, has declined over the years and been taken down. I appreciate that it's a facility which is not owned by the Borough Council, it's owned by Forestry England, but I would much rather see that level of investment being put into Stoke Park Woods to mitigate for the impact of people, get it so that the recreational use of the woods is better defined, which might help to reduce some of the ecological impact of the level of people on Stoke Park Woods, um, and get it so that that becomes a much um, a much better protected asset for our, our community going forward. Now, I appreciate it will take a while to word up um, a, a proposal to spend £240,000 on Stoke Park Woods. Um, so I'm suggesting that for now, we simply delete Itchen Valley Country Park from this finance report. And we ask um, Andy um, and Nick to um, work on um, putting together a proposal to spend that Section 106 money on Stoke Park Woods. Thank you. Thank you. I think um, Councillor Parker Jones is next. I just need to check my. Yes, it was. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'd like to. Uh, I will not um, re say all the things that Jin said. Um, Councillor Tidridge, I think she covered them very well. Um, I was actually thinking much broader than actually Stoke Park Woods. Um, there's Noel Park, which is being used ever such a lot by the by new residents in Fair Oak. There's lots and lots of um, open space across Bishop Stoke, Fair Oak and Horton Heath that is, I think our communities have, are really seeing the benefit of because of COVID. And I'd like to protect it for future generations. I think COVID has demonstrated to our communities the importance of that space and being out there. Um, and I know many of you will have gone into Stoke Park Woods and, and little paths that used to be really little, like one person wide, are now several people wide. That is the kind of scale we're talking. So I, I can think of lots of areas around here that could really benefit from that money. And I'd love to work with look at identifying places that Horton Heath could really, really benefit. Um, and I'm not saying that Itchen Valley Country Park is not a wonderful asset, but it is a borough wide asset. And if every every committee was putting in, then I might have been more inclined. But that personally, I haven't heard anything that convinces me yet that we should be um, taking the money away from our, our area and depriving Bishop Stoke, Fair Oak and Horton Heath residents of, of improving the open space they can access on their doorstep. So I'd happily uh, support striking um, that recommendation from the report. Thank you for allowing me to speak. No, that's your right. Of course, Ms. Reek. Um, uh, Councillor Marsh and Councillor Dean both want to speak, but uh, as Councillor Marsh has already spoken a little bit, I'll ask Councillor Dean to go first. Uh, right, thank you, Chair. Um, and I, I think the option that number three has already been covered quite well. I'll go back to number two. For the the community liaison, however it's going to work or what it's called, um, I have some reservations over this. In that, this is one-off money. Something like this, allowing that development is going to be going on for quite a few years to come, and more people moving into the area. It needs to be an ongoing thing. There is nothing within this to show ongoing funding, and you can't borrow money or anything else due to the, the way our financial system works to carry on funding it and I, I, I don't want to take it have something put in place that in three years time it's going to have to be just done away with and forgotten about so I'm I'm minded at the moment to ask for that to be removed until such time as we can actually see how it's going to be funded long term thank you Thank you, Councillor Dean. As I understood the proposal, this was a one-off project, which would be a, uh, would not continue forever, um, and consequently uh, could be funded in this way. But your, your, your fundamental point is that we shouldn't be using capital for income, um, for income expenses, or 
uh, is of course absolutely right. And um, so I, I'm 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 a bit divided on that one, but uh, um, you know I, I I feel that as it is a one-off project, I think it can can go through. For, technically, I mean you know obviously this depends on the councillors, but um, but you know I I take your point. It's a, it's a good one. Councillor Marsh. Thank you, um, Councillor Caldry. I'd like to speak on number two again. And I, while I understand Councillor um, Dean's um, concerns about item number two, um, I don't share them because I'd rather have somebody working for five years and get this program starting. And if in the future we see 106 agreements, if we wanted to extend it, that might be an opportunity or a way of doing it. But for, for that particular item, this is all about local communities that are uh, um, have got a there's a major driving force for achieving social change and improving the quality of life and health and well-being of local people, um, and in the current post-pandemic um, climate, work to involve and develop the local communities is vital to helping these communities to thrive and prosper, particularly in Faro, Courtney, and Bishopstoke, where we have had such large-scale development, and. We will continue to see the com communities grow at a rapid pace over the next five years. So starting with the Pembers Hill Estate, the Community Development Officer will um, deliver and support local initiatives that help improve the quality of life for local people and build the resilience, as well as ensure that new cohorts of residents are in integrated. The post will hopefully be jointly managed um, and Section 106 will not only fund the post for a period of five years, but also have an annual budget for delivering key community led projects for the benefit of all of the residents within Fair Oak, Horton Heath and Bishopstoke. So I, I believe that that is very important and I'd be very sorry to see that um, being struck, particularly as that 106 money was intended for PEMBA's um, development. So I would like to see that one go ahead. Um, I just wanted to thank on item number three, I'd like to Thank Councillor Tidridge for what you said about um, that. And I completely echo everything that you said about Itchen Valley Country Park. It's not that it's not important. It absolutely is a valuable resource. And if every other local area committee were, were being asked to pay in an equivalent amount, then that would be more acceptable to me. But to ask our community to lose a quarter of a million pounds that could be so well used elsewhere. And I do agree with Councillor Parker Jones that there are lots of open spaces that can be enhanced. And I do think Stoke, Stokewood um, Park needs to be one important element of that, particularly with a stronger link between Crowd Hill. And it does link up, uh, Stoke, uh, Stokewood Park does link up our two communities incredibly well. So I would like to see some money spent there, but I think that there are opportunities for enhancements of, of a lot of open spaces within Fair Oak. Um, so I agree with my, my colleagues that it would be a shame to lose this money from our community. Thank you. Um, Councillor Rushton. Thank you, Chair. Um, sorry, I was muting and unmuting and it didn't seem to do anything. Um, I echo all the words from um, sorry, from Councillor Tidridge and Councillor Parker Jones and, and Councillor Marsh on Itchen Valley Country Park. And I mean, as soon as this came up, I've, I've had discussions with sort of pretty much everyone about it or with Councillor Caudry and Councillor Marsh. And we're both, we're often, we're all in agreement that that money could be spent far better within our area especially and to improve all those areas that we mentioned and I think that's very very important um, and with regard to item two I mean I as I think there are there are it's a five-year project but with the number of people coming into our areas and to, into, into the whole of the BIFO area mm -hmm. there will be um, the options or the possibilities of taking it for the parish councils may continue to combined may sort of as a job share between it, however it's done, that could be funded by additional preset money or um, maybe from one of further 106 agreements from future planning applications. I mean, we've got five years, so um, so yes, that, 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 that I think I think I'm comfortable with, with that money being um, used for this 
this is item two, not not now item three. Item two, I'm happy for that to be used for this. And I think the, the future funding of that or the continuity of the project can be looked at with, over the next five years. Um, with regard to the money that for, for number three, the each of the country park, I, I believe that should be spent within our area. Um, I think we should, as a team, uh, alongside the officers, look at the most uh, useful places that it can be done and where we can get the biggest bang for bu bang for our buck. I mean, it's quite a lot of bucks, actually, isn't it? So we want, we need to be able to spend that money on, I mean, you know, the, the amount of money we spent on, say, on the planning recently um, and those sort of areas, any anything areas that can be brought back from sort of almost desolate, desolate areas or no-go areas that could be improved is as that's an amazing amount of money and I think that should be all spent all within our area. Thank you. That's for that's my rant for the for the moment. Uh, uh, thank you, Councillor Russian. Uh, Councillor Dean, you wanted to add one or two points. Uh, yes, if you don't mind. Um, no, I, I'd like to apologise. I may have been misunderstood in what I was saying. I actually really think the idea on number two is fantastic. We need something. It sort of strikes me as like a cross between um, a visitor information centre, but to local residents as they move in, guiding them what they can do, what's around. It's, it's a fantastic scheme. I was purely concerned about funding because we are going to have developments going on a lot longer than five years. That was my main concern. I don't want anyone to think I'm against the idea because I mean, in principle it's absolutely fantastic and it should be used anywhere across the borough. Thank you. Thank you, Cassidy. Has everyone said what they want to say? Well, um, who, who's going to propose uh, knocking out number three? I'd like to propose it, please. <laughs> I was going Everybody to say it. <laughs> um, I, I think that's, that's, uh, I, I take, I suppose we better have a vote. Just raise your hands. Chair, I think we probably should um, actually formalise that as a, a proper proposal. Um, so I think, yeah. Jean, I think to three. clarify, it would be to um, remove item three, um, or to, to, was it to approve all the items from yes. one, one to 14, excluding Item three. Everyone happy with that? Yep. Laura, does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that does make sense. Good. So this that's the amended resolution. All those in favour of the amended resolution, just unmute and Agreed. 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 But you do need a seconder for that one. Oh, <laughs> well, I have Jin, Jin proposed it and I will second it. Uh, right. Councillor Tidridge proposed it and so I will second it. Right. And I Thanks. think then we've all in, all in. wrap over the knuckles and democratic services unless I pull myself together a bit better. So thank you very much for being right. Um, do we move now back to the TROs? Yes, and we do, Chair. I think we do. Uh, have a site technical difficulty been solved? As far as I'm aware, yes. Thank you. Right, Barbara. Right. Good evening. Take two. Let's uh, keep your fingers crossed. Um, so let's try and start the presentation again. Who's back briefing on how they might manage this or pay of you? That'd be great. Brilliant. Um, right, welcome back. So we had the incident initially where um, some of the athletes, the, the same male and female, um, have, have collapsed and some parents have made concern. So what was your initial thoughts when you've heard that? Whose audio is that? For East Borough Council. Concern. This presentation is to explain the classic regulation All proposals right. for Bishop Stoke and Fairroad. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. 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 There's, there's another. There's another. Um, summarise the recommendations to the committee. Barbara, can you please oh, the presentation? We've got another audio going on in the background. Is that now stopped? 
OK, that's it. That appears to have stopped. Sorry, Barbara, can you if you can go back to the beginning? Yeah, thank you. Uh, if I can find out to do that. Good evening, my name is Barbara Thomas and I'm the Traffic Management Engineer for Eastleigh Borough Council. This presentation is to explain the traffic regulation proposals for Bishop Stoke and Fair Oak, to run through the representations received in response to the public notice advertising the proposals and to summarise the recommendations to the committee. I will be dealing with each site in turn and questions and debate will be invited after the presentation for each individual site. Proposals to introduce waiting restrictions on various roads in Bishopstoke and Fair Oak were advertised on the 29th of January with a three week consultation period. 48 representations were received, 44 in relation to seven sites and four in relation to disabled persons parking bays. The first site is Church Road, Bishopstoke at its junction with Longreed Avenue and outside St Mary's Church. The first part of the proposal is for a 20 metre length of no waiting Monday to Saturday 8am to 6pm restrictions outside the church. The intention was to provide space to wait for vehicles connected with weddings and funerals and for blue badge holders visiting the church. 12 objections were received from the vicar and other church officials who feel that their needs would best be served by leaving the curbside unrestricted as it is at present. The recommendation therefore is to withdraw this proposed restriction. As shown on this slide. The second part of the proposal is no waiting at any time restrictions on Church Road from 20 metres north to 10 metres south of its junction with Longmead Avenue and on both sides of Longmead Avenue from its junction with Church Road for 10 metres eastwards. Three objections were received in relation to this. The objectors have requested that the length of the proposed restriction on the south side of Longmead Avenue is reduced to allow for parking in front of their house. Since the junction itself is relatively wide, a reduction in the proposed restriction would address the objections whilst maintaining visibility of oncoming traffic for users of the junction. It is therefore recommended that the proposed restriction on the south side of Longmead Avenue is reduced in length so that it runs from the giveway line to the top of the ramped curb access to the driveway of the westernmost property on Longmead Avenue. It is recommended that the remainder of the restrictions on this site are implemented as advertised. I'll hand back now to um, Councillor Caldry um, to take the questions and have the debate. Right, this is the first uh, proposal. Does anybody have any questions? Any member have any questions? Sorry, Chair, before we get there, we do have the statement from the Reverend at the church. Right, could, sorry. Could could we have that statement, please? Yep, Andy, because your connection, you're having trouble. Do you want me to read it out? Yeah, if you can, I'm happy to try, but yeah, if you're, you're struggling, yeah, no yeah, that's fine. So this statement is from Reverend Richard Wise, the director of Bishop Stoke. He says, I would like to thank the traffic manager engineer for raising the possibility of a restriction to parking outside St Mary's in order to provide a place for blue badge holders attending church to park and also for wedding and funeral cars to wait. As you will see from the comments from the parochial church council and other church members on reflection, this did not seem to be a helpful thing for the church. No other reasons are given for this restriction and it is recommended by the engineer that it is withdrawn. I would therefore ask the committee if they would please vote to withdraw this TRA. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, there yes, any? Chair. Um, oh, Councillor Dean, sorry. Uh, just, just wrong. Um, 
Yeah, it's just purely a question to Barbara. The re re reduction in the double yellow line around the south corner of Longmead, uh, what is that actually reducing it down to? I know it was originally only 10 metres, which is the legal bit you're not supposed to park to a corner anyway. Is it a noticeable reduction sort of? That's all the question was really. Um, it was to reduce it from 10 to 7 metres. It basically takes it to the, the top of the dropped kerb ramp by their driveway, so it leaves the driveway clear. Yeah, that's minimal. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any debate? Does anyone want to say anything? No, I'm happy to be uh, all up. Sorry, Chair. Um, I, I'm happy to be guided, particularly by the church, on matters relating to the how they wish to proceed and if they feel that they're. So I am. Um, I'm, I'm content with the proposal, proposed amendments to the um, TRO, as I've heard them um, during this bit of debate, or as described by um, our traffic regulation order officer. OK, so do we have a seconder for that proposal? Thank you, Councillor Rushton. All in favour, can you just unmute uh, and say? Apologies, Chair, as this is more a legal process, I do need to do the roll call as opposed to the um, unmute to agree. It's in a similar way that we do with planning. Apologies. What, on each of them? Yeah. Right. Like for your name, please signal if you are in support or against the proposal. So, Councillor Coldrey? In favour. Councillor Dean? In favour. Councillor Marsh. In favour. Councillor Parker Jones. Four. Councillor Rushton. Four. Councillor Tidridge. Four. That's unanimous, Chair. Thank you. Um, so we move on to the next one, and we need it. Uh, 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 it's, it's Barbara again, I think. Okay next part of the presentation. The third site is Church Road at its junctions with Dartington Road and Breach Lane. I beg your pardon, that should be the second site. As shown on this. The second site is the junction of Church Road with Bishop's Court. The proposal is for a no waiting at any time restriction on Church Road from 10 metres northeast to 10 metres southwest of Bishop's Court and on both sides of Bishop's Court for 10 metres from Church Road southeastwards. This proposal attracted 10 representations from residents of Bishop's Court. They have no objection to the restrictions at the junction but would like to see them extended further into Bishop's Court where the road is narrow. This request will be added to the list of sites for investigation at a later date and it is recommended that the restrictions are introduced as advertised. The temporary double yellow line on Church Road opposite Rose Close has now been removed. Thank you. Um, now, do we have any questions? Right, do we need a proposer before we have any speakers? I'll propose that, Chair. Thank you. Seconder? I'm happy to second. I'm happy. Thank you. Um, does anyone want to debate at all? I'm, I, I would just like to say, um, Chair, that I'm really pleased that we're going to um, consider the views of Bishop Court residents. I know that they've experienced problems with that narrow bit and um, with emergency vehicles. So I'm really pleased that that's going to come back and I'm sure that they will be pleased too. Um, so thank you for your work on that. Yes, it's a pity we, for technical reasons, we can't do it now, but there we are. 
OK, so uh, we, we've had a proposal to second it. Any other debate? So can I ask uh, for a roll call, please? Councillor Coldrey? Yes. Councillor Dean? Yes. Councillor Marsh? Four. Councillor Parker-Jones? Four. Councillor P Rushton? Four. Councillor Tidridge? Four. That's unanimous, Chair. Thank you. So we move on to the next one. Thank you, Chair. The third site is Church Road at its junctions with Dartington Road and Breach Lane. The proposals are for low waiting at any time restrictions on the east side of Church Road from 10 metres north to 17 metres south of Dartington Road and on the west side from 10 metres north to 10 metres south of Breach Lane. On both sides of Dartington Road from its junction with Church Lane eastward for 10 metres on the south side of Breach Lane from its junction with Church Road to its junction with Burrow Hill Place and on the north side from its junction with Church Lane westwards for 10 metres. This site attracted a comment from a resident that there is a daily problem finding somewhere to park and an objection from a resident of Breach Lane objecting to the proposal to no waiting any time restrictions on the south side of the lane because this will encourage parking on the north side. The resident fears that this will result in driveways being obstructed. The reason for proposing no waiting at any time restrictions for 17 rather than 10 metres on Church Road south of Dartington Road was to account for the bus stop which starts 17 metres south of Dartington Road. We have ascertained in the last month that the bus stop is now redundant so the recommendation is now to reduce the length of the proposed restriction to 10 metres south of Dartington Road and to remove the bus stop marking and sign in due course. As shown on this slide. With regards to Breach Lane, observations have shown that vehicles are often parked both sides of the road with vehicles on the south side parking two wheels on the footway. This practice obstructs the passage of larger vehicles along the carriageway and damages the curb and footway. If residents find that their driveway is obstructed by parked vehicles, they can apply for an access protection marking to be installed. It is recommended that this restriction is introduced as advertised. OK, over to you, Chair. Thank you. Um, now, uh, do I do are there any questions for, for for Barbara? No. So, do I have a proposer? <laughs> no. Rob, uh, Councillor Ashton, thank you. Proposed, Chair. And uh, thank you. So, we have a proposal and seconder. Uh, do we have any debate? Could Could I just ask one thing? I was really. Uh, this is possibly as an aside to the TROs, but I was really disappointed to hear that Bishop Stokes lost its school bus. Really disappointed. We've had so many new people move in. We've got the whole of that massive Bow Lakes area. The, the young people, if they want to catch a bus to school, have to walk almost a kilometre, in fact, over a kilometre if they're at the, at the bottom end, to get to a bus stop. I'm just mortified that it's been removed um, and half of me doesn't want the bus stop to be removed because I want that bus route reinstated. How on earth can we say that there's a climate emergency and not be providing sustainable transport for our young? Thank you. 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 Th
young people. How can we argue about wanting to have safer crossings when basically we're telling people you've moved in here, you're going to drive your children to school or your kids are going to have to take very, very dangerous routes on push bikes. I'm, I'm just I was just up, so upset when I read that um, about losing the school bus. Um, and I'm sorry, Chair, because this probably wasn't really what the TRO is about. Um, so I'm going to support the TRO, but I am so upset, so, so disappointed to lose our bus stop. North Bishop Stoke, we have a lot of older residents. There's absolutely no provision for them. It's absolutely heart disheartening, really, what's happened. So um, and I know that's not the fault of anybody here, but oh, I'm sure you all, all are all experiencing my frustration. But please, yes, I am. Um, I absolutely support it. And I'm very pleased at Breach Lane, which is a very, very, very narrow road, which has got a lot of new traffic on it and actually directs all the big vehicles that go to the Bishop State Retirement Village down it is going to have some proper waiting restrictions. It's been promised for a long time. So thank you very much. I'm happy to propose it. <laughs> thank you. And, and 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 thank you also for, for for your sharing your frustration because actually you're absolutely right. Um, I don't suppose I'm allowed to say that either, but there we are. Um, okay. Um, so I think it's another roll call. Sorry, Tim. I don't know if I missed something, but did we have a seconder for that one? I'm happy to second that. I think I might have actually proposed it, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Councillor Coldry. I'm in favour. Councillor Dean. In favour. Councillor Marsh. Four. Councillor Parker Jones. Four. Councillor Rushton. In favour. Councillor Tidridge. Four. That's unanimous again, Chair. Thank you. So we move on to the next one. The fourth site is Sedgwick Road. This proposal is for a length of no waiting at any time restriction outside numbers 19 and 21 in order to provide a passing place for vehicles, including buses. Three representations were received. The Blue Star Bus Company supports the proposal, which will improve overall journey times. One resident objects because they have recently had a dropped curve and access protection marking installed to enable them to park in front of their driveway. Another resident has also recently had a dropped curb and access protection marking installed, but does not object to the proposed restrictions. Both residents have asked for the cost of the access protection marking to be refunded if the proposal is implemented. The engineer's response is, Sedgwick Road is on the Blue Star 2 route with a frequency of 15 minutes in each direction during weekdays. Vehicles are generally parked on the west side of Sedgwick Road for much of its length and owing to the road having a slight curve, there is not a view of oncoming traffic until drivers have committed to overtake the parked cars. Some drivers choose to drive over the verge and footway on the east side in order to pass oncoming traffic, which is of course unlawful and hazardous to pedestrians and causes damage to the verge and, and curbstones. The location of the proposed restriction is in front of residential driveways, hence that curbside space is not available for general parking. The access protection marking is intended to highlight a dropped curb access, which should be kept free of parked vehicles. It should not be provided if residents intend to park across their own dropped curb. There is curbside parking elsewhere along the road on a first come first served basis. The two residents have been informed that EBC will re refund the cost of the bar markings if the proposal is implemented. It is recommended that this restriction is introduced as advertised. Thank you, Barbara. Are there any questions? Then do I have a proposal for the recommendation? Thank you, and a seconder, Councillor Dean. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you. 
is there any debate? So can we have a roll call, please? Of course, Chair. Councillor Caldry? I'm in favour. Councillor Dean? Yes. Councillor Marsh? Or Councillor Parker Jones? Councillor Parker Jones? Four. Ashton? Four, as recommended. Councillor Didridge? Four. That's unanimous again, Chair. Thank you. So we move on to the next one. The next site is Stoke Park Road at the junctions of Nelson Road and Sedgwick Road. This proposal is for no rating at any time restrictions on both sides of Stoke Park Road from 10 metres west of Sedgwick Road to 10 metres east of Nelson Road. This proposal attracted three representations, two in favour and one objection. The objection is on the basis that there is no obstruction caused to large vehicles by cars parked on the north side of Stoke Park Road outside number 43. The Blue Star 2 bus turns right out of Sedgwick Road and is not impeded by cars parked outside number 43. The school bus only runs once a day during term time, which hardly justifies an at any time restriction. The engineer's response is, since the proposals were advertised, we have ascertained that the school bus no longer operates. Since no issues around access at these junctions have been raised by others, such as EBC Waste Management, it is recommended that the proposed restriction on the north side of Stoke Park Road is reduced to, from 27 to 14 metres west of Nelson Road, as shown in this slide. This should overcome the objection and provide sufficient visibility for users of the junction of Stoke Park Road and Nelson Road. The next slide. Sorry, I think we. Sorry, back to you. We stop that site. Uh, do we have any questions? Councillor Marsh. Um, sorry, can I just clarify, you did, did I hear correctly that you said that there have been no objections or concerns raised by the refuse crew or the bus companies directly with Eastley Borough Council, is that right? Yeah, that's correct, um, Councillor. I've checked, checked our database of um, traffic issues um, and there's, there's nothing on that junction um, going back some years. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Right, do I have a proposer? Councillor Marsh. And the seconder, Councillor Dean. Uh, do we have any debate? I better look at the chat to see if anybody wants to. Uh, yes, yes, Chair, if we could. Of course. Um, uh, uh, Councillor yeah. Dean, yes. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, basically, I'd like to second Lou's um, frustration earlier on about the school bus. That is the main. That is the the main reason why we were looking at having that, that double yellow line opposite, because there is already damage to the curb where buses have actually cut to cut the corner in the past, which Hampshire County Council have got to reinstate and sort out. Seeing that there is no bus, there is I, I agree no actual need for the double line to go along that side. So I'm actually for off the proposal as it stands. Thank you. Um, Councillor Tidridge. Yes, I'd just like to um, point out that simply not putting double yellow lines doesn't necessarily mean that it's OK to park somewhere. Um, it's it's not advisable to park opposite junctions. It's dangerous. It's not acceptable. Um, if this council decides or this, this, this committee decides not to put double yellow lines um, there, I don't have a problem with that. But it is worth reiterating that parking opposite junctions is not a very sensible idea. Thank you, Councillor Tidridge. Anybody else? Sorry, Jess. Uh, Councillor Rushton. Someone's got the news on. Um, um, I think, yeah, I think with the recommendation as it is, I think that's it's a it's a sort of a good 
point for where it is at the moment. I mean, obviously, if the, if and when the bus service comes back, um, if it is returned, maybe a, a review can be done of this at some other time. Um, and it just, it, you know, because it, it could be it could be an issue that sort of thing at some point later in later in later. I think uh, maybe a few, you know, literally see see what happens in a few years or something like that. Um, I know this one's been 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 here and on this route and uh, or that certainly parts of the number two route have been on on these TROs for many years, um, probably long, longer than I've actually been a councillor. So uh, <laughs> which isn't that long, but it's, it's long enough. Um, <laughs> so, yes, I think um, I'm, I'm very happy with this as recommended. Um, so I think that's part of my that's my part of the debate. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Esther. Councillor Marsh. Thank you. Um, I almost want to disagree with you, Councillor Rushton, because um, I personally don't think we should keep revisiting all of these on such a regular basis. I'm just so mindful that having spoken to the department who's meant to be carrying out of this survey, I am raising it with Eastleigh Borough Council that I'm concerned about the staffing issues and the amount of work being carried out. But I think they, it would raise concern if um, junctions keep being revisited. If things change significantly, fair enough. But my understanding is that this recommendation is being made even if the bus was traveling down that road one day, I mean, once per day, um, that the recommendation was being made for that reason. But I'm quite happy with, I agree with what Councillor Tidridge is saying. And um, the highway code is the highway code. Um, and the same will apply to every single junction around Fair Oak, Horton Heath and Bishopstoke. It's not peculiar to this junction. Um, it, it is what it is. But I, I think as the proposal is written and the recommendation has been made, um, I'd be happy with that. Thank you. Right. Um, I think we now move to a roll call, don't we? This is for the, as proposed by, uh, for the amended proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Coldry. I'm in favour of the amended proposal. Councillor Dean. Sorry, yes. Councillor Marsh. Four. Councillor Parker Jones. Four. Councillor Rushton. Four. Councillor Tidridge. Four. Unanimous again, Chair. Thank you. We move on to White Road, I think. So, Barbara, could you talk us through that, please? Yes, certainly, Chair. The next site is White Road and its junctions with Edward Avenue and Longmead Avenue. The proposal is for no rating at any time restrictions on the south side of Edward Avenue from 10 metres west to 10 metres east of White Road, on the north side of Longmead Avenue from 10 metres west to 10 metres east of White Road, on the east side of White Road from the junction of Edward Avenue southwards for 10 metres and from the junction of Longmead Avenue northwards for 10 metres and on the west side of White Road for its entire length. As well as protecting visibility at the junctions, the proposed restriction on the west side should ensure sufficient carriageway width for the passage of larger vehicles, such as dust carts. Eight objections from six households were received. Four objectors agree with the restrictions at the junctions, but object to the whole of the west side of White Road being restricted because they and other residents rely on being able to park there and they feel that this would exacerbate parking issues in nearby roads, which are particularly difficult at present, owing to parking by contractors vehicles associated with nearby developments. Residents of two households in Edward Avenue have requested that the proposed restriction is reduced outside number 44 to enable one car to be parked on the south side whilst leaving the driveway to number 44 clear. The engineer's response is, the carriageway on White Road is approximately six metres wide. Observations show that in general, vehicles park with all four wheels on the carriageway on the east side and partly on the footway on the west side. The footway on the west side is approximately 1.2 metres wide and cars parked here obstruct the passage of pedestrians 
and over time damage the curb and footway. It is recommended that the proposed restrictions on White Road and at the junction of White Road and Longmead Avenue are implemented as advertised. It is re recommended Sorry, Barbara, was that the end of that bit of the presentation? Um, more, more or less, sorry, there was there was an extra bit. It was just, um, it is recommended that the proposed restrictions on Edward Avenue are reduced by one metre outside number 44, which would address part of um, those two residents' objections. Um, and then, yeah, that's back, back over to, to, back to you, Chair. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions? No questions. Do we have a proposer? Happy to propose. Thank you, Councillor Dean and seconder Councillor Tidridge, thank you. Uh, do we have any debate? No one's putting that forward, so I think we move to a roll call. Councillor Caldry? Yes, I'm in favour. Councillor Dean? Uh, yes. Councillor Marsh? Four. Councillor Parker Jones? Four. Councillor Rushton? Four. Councillor Tidridge? Four. That's unanimous again, Chair. Thank you. So we'll move on to Sandy Lane and Winifred Close. Barbara, could you talk us through that, please? Certainly, Chair. Did the, the proposed restrictions on Edward Avenue are reduced by one metre outside number 44. The next site is Sandy Lane in the vicinity of Winifred Close in Fair Oak. Three representations were received, two objections and one in support. something seems to have gone wrong there. Let's yep. try that one again. Barbara, did you tick to include system audio? Because if you did it, if you didn't, it, there's no audio playing. OK, let's just try that one again. Beg your pardon. next site is Sandy Lane in the vicinity of Winifred Close in Fair Oak. Three representations were received, two objections and one in support. The objector's concern is that the proposed restrictions will not prevent parking on Sandy Lane opposite Winifred Close and they feel that the restrictions would be better on the west side because cars are often parked here and it is on the inside of a bend. The other representation supports the proposal but feels it could be improved by extending the restrictions further north to 117 Sandy Lane to improve visibility for vehicles exiting Inglewood Gardens. Engineer's response is, the proposed restrictions are intended to protect visibility for users of the junction with Winifred Close and Sandy Lane. Whilst the west side of the road is on the inside of a slight curve, it is a gentle curve given the speed of traffic and the parked cars do not compromise visibility of oncoming vehicles. We will add a request for further restrictions on Sandy Lane to the list of sites for consideration in the next financial year. It is recommended that the restrictions are introduced as advertised. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? 
Councillor Rushton. Yes. Yes. Um, Barbara, a quick question with regard to the the extension of the restrictions. Say, was it to one one seven? Is that would that be to the end of the wall? That is it. Sort of so the extent, the full extent of one one seven, as it used to be. Because I know there's now two houses on there. Um, so there's actually three houses on that site that used to be one one seven, originally. Um, would that go? Would would the would that have gone all the way to the end of their wall effectively? So the drive of one one nine, is that what was requested? Um, it's a bit difficult to see from this plan, councillor. Um, yeah. But clearly, it would go further further than it goes at the at the moment. Yeah, I know. I know there is a there is because yeah. that because that pipe footpath is quite wide. I know there is. Um, so yeah, um, maybe I should bring that into the uh, debate. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think sorry, I could have a quick look on Google Street View and um, ascertain exactly where 117 is. Well, uh, I can tell you on, on that 117 is, well, 117A is the one just above Inglewood Gardens and 117, as it was, it used to be a bungalow, is now two houses um, which have been built, um, is the next building up and then 119 is the next one. So there's, there's a boundary line between that all the way to the road line effectively. So that 117's land ends at that boundary line that comes all the way to the road or to the footpath. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's if, if I if I were if we were to extend it, that's where I would recommend it too, because it, that is quite a nasty bit of um, if anyone parks there, you can't see when you're coming out. Certainly out of Inglewood Gardens, you can't see if someone's coming out, let alone if you're coming out, mm -hmm. especially when it's even worse when the bins are out. But that's a separate issue. I think there's actually a telegraph pole quite close to that um, there as well. So that sort of obviously impedes that. And where it's quite a wide pavement, I know there's a lot of um, footpath or pavement parking there as well, or used to be. Mm -hmm. That's my comment or question. So. Long question. Thank you. <laughs> um, any other questions? No. Uh, do I have a proposal? Thank you, Councillor Rushton. Thank you, Councillor Marsh, for seconding. And do we have any debate? I don't think so. So I think we move sorry, to sorry. Roll. One, one thing. Oh, sorry. I, I would, in some ways, I would like to see that the extension is reviewed at some point um, in the future. Um, and I know if, if you, if that is, if we're looking at Sandy Lane and uh, so on the future, that may be part of the sort of the various bits for Sandy Lane, maybe Barbara. So that would be good to be looked at for you at some point just to see if there is an issue. Yeah, or well, we can we can add it to um, to the sites to be reviewed um, for the next financial year. OK, that'd be okay. That's great. Thank you. So we move to the roll call. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Coldry. Yes, please. yes, in favour. Councillor Dean. Yes. Councillor Marsh. Four. Councillor Parker Jones. Four. Councillor Rushton. Four. Councillor Tidridge. Four. Unanimous again, Chair. Thank you very much. And we move on to the disabled bays. Um, Barbara, can you talk us through that, please? Disabled bays. Four representations were received from residents of different roads, objecting to the imposition of up to six disabled bays in their road. The proposal in question is to amend the existing TRO in such a way so as to enable the council to install up to six disabled bays in a road as required for disabled residents without having to go through a TRO process each time. This would make the process of installing and removing disabled bays much quicker and more flexible than it is at present. There are no current proposals to install any new disabled persons parking bays in those roads. 
residents directly affected by proposed disabled bays would still be consulted. No representations were received in relation to either proposed rating restrictions on Church Road at its junction with Rose Close and outside the playground north of Rose Close, or to the proposed parking place in the lay-by outside the welcome store in Fair Oak Road. And it is recommended that these restrictions are implemented as advertised. In summary, the representations have been considered and it is recommended that the proposed restrictions be implemented with the amendments described. This concludes the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, Councillor Parker Jones. Um, it's just a quick question about um, accessible bays. I, I was under the impression that accessible bays need to have like a formal sign going up for them. And I know that there's a lot of bays that don't have that. Is is that the case? Um, have I missed something? Should should the bays that have been put in be reviewed? And if they are still appropriate, have signs put up? Thank you, Councillor Parker-Jones. Um, no, the, the 2016 uh, traffic signs regulations and general directions um, removed the need to have both a sign and a disabled worded marking. You can have either or either or or both that's brilliant um, thank you very much uh, but we've been uh, or ebc has been in the habit of putting in what they call advisory disabled bays um which are technically speaking not lawful um and by introducing this amendment to the tro um, we can legalize them all of those in more or less one fell swoop um as, as well as introducing bays um, much quicker um, as uh, in, in the future as, as people uh, apply for them. Thank you very much. That's, that's what I, I knew there was some problem with the bays, but that will be why then. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Right. Any other questions? Uh, do I have a for this? Thank you, Councillor Marsh and seconded Councillor Park Jones. Thank you. Any debate? Uh, if I could, Chair. Yes, do please. Yeah, um, I'd just like to say that I'm actually really in favour of the, the putting the proposal forward for this to be put into the TRO system like this, because otherwise anybody moving in or into the area or needing, having the need for a disabled bay could end up, if they were to move in next week, they would have to wait at least a year before they can get a bay outside their house, at least with this. It can be done almost instantly, so I'm very much for it and I will be voting for this. Thank you. Thank you. I entirely agree with that. Um, Councillor Rushton. I, was just, uh, whole, I wholeheartedly agree with what Ray's just said and it's, it seems mad that it's not already uh, in there somewhere because mm. um, it just makes sense to be able to go, OK, someone moves in. And also the other part is removing them as well when they're no yeah. longer needed. Because that that is a big issue, uh, certainly um, I know, or can be. Because if you've still got to take a year to get rid of it, and and lawfully, lawfully, no one's allowed to park there. So you actually we want to free up as much of the parking that we can, um, but also we want to make it so that they the, the bays can be added in as quickly as they they needed. Thank you. Any other debate? Uh, we need a roll call. Councillor Coldry. Yes, I'm in favour. Councillor Dean? Yes. Councillor Marsh? Four. Councillor Parker Jones? Four. Councillor Rushton? Four. Councillor Tidridge? Four. And that's unanimous, Chair. Thank you. So I think that ends the TROs, doesn't it? Well, uh, Barbara, thank you very much for struggling with your technology. I don't know how you solved it. And I'm very glad <laughs> that I wasn't asked to help. But um, thank you very much for going through that. It's been a, uh, a lot of work and, um, and I'm sorry the technology's let you down, but um, you did manage in the end, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I have no idea how I made it work either, but we got there <laughs> in the end. <laughs> very well done. Okay. Thanks then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um, so we then move on to the local area action plan.
Um, and can I ask Andy Thompson to introduce the report? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, as from Barbara's uh, IT problems, mine have just literally gone uh, the other way. So my uh, my screen has just paused with my uh, report on it. So I do apologise. If you just bear with me one second. One second. Oh, all times. I do apologise. Andy, would it help if I showed the report on screen or the appendix, one of the two? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, actually, if you. Um, Oh, sorry, we are just restarting now. Sorry, so, so it's just a word just decided to fail. Don't fail on me. Sorry, I do apologise. And here we are. Yeah, apologies for that. Yeah, if you leave that on screen as well, that'd be. Um, yeah, this is the um, before local area action plan. Uh, this has been in fruition for the last three years. Um, as a background, as set out, um, the council has a, you know, has a agreed a set of objectives. This comes under the corporate plan, but obviously we're very keen to our local area committees to to have decision making at a local level. As I discussed previously, we have a community investment program CIP list which we state all the, the projects and plans we seek to, to use our, our one of six contributions. And these are plans, uh, funds were approved over the years. Uh, each of the five local area committees, what we try to seek through the local area action plan is to have some more shorter term priorities of things that we want to achieve and really highlight and part on the public what we're here to do and what we're, we're looking to achieve. Um, this draft local area action plan, it has um, been obviously previously done by councillors and now we're just looking for, for um, approval of this. In terms of, um, I will just draw this one part out of the report because I do think it's important in every report we do, we, we have a section there in, in terms of climate change and environmental implications. And as you'll see what I come to in the report later on, I think it's really and I really, really want to point out that this committee really, truly is focused on the environment and certainly tackling climate change. And you'll see from some of the key priorities I list that this really, really comes to the fore as well. So that's the report. So if we're looking at the appendix, which is um, it's a bit of a, a, a one page summary, we're trying to get everything on there to make it quite palatable, certainly for the community to, to, um, to, to read. And um, some of the standard things there about the areas of responsibility for the committee, uh, for the area local area committee, about championing the local area, deciding on local priorities, monitoring local budgets, and some of my responsibilities there about supporting local councillors, working with our partners and some of our key partnerships there on the right. So for our parish councils there, got a community safety group and as discussed earlier on about the climate emergency action group, as well as Horton Heath, which is a forum which obviously sits slightly outside this, but it's still within the local area. But a key thing that we look for every year is our key priorities uh, and projects. And we've really looked to revamp this year. And again, these aren't in order, and I think it's key that not in order, but I think, as I've said before, it, it's no surprise that at the heart of that is our, our climate change and emergency action plan. Really, this has got to be our goal in every decision we make. This should be really at the forefront of, of every decision we make. And certainly with new development, this is slightly tweaked over years. We've obviously had the SGL in previous years. That's that's obviously gone into to the long glass the long, long grass. Um, so certainly, but still, we really want to carry on that ethos that certainly with every new development, we're really keen that members are going to work tirelessly to make sure that there's regard for the environment and on the existing communities as well, as well as well life and countryside. Um, the third one you've got down there, I think this really is evident on my earlier report, really maximising um, the, the community benefits of developer contributions. We'll see there's nearly two million pounds approved earlier that that's key investment to local community. So one of our key priorities is to continue that and really make sure that that really uh, is hitting the, the, the real needs of our community. 
Um, a couple of projects there, again, that were in my finance report earlier on, the Memorial Hall. I won't go too much more into that as well, because again, I did detail that earlier, as I did further on with St Paul's and the public art project. Um, uh, and also, I did touch on it before about the Tree Corridor project as well, and the planning, I think Councillor Rushton referred to it earlier on. You know, the planning is this, this bit of forgotten woodland in Bishop Stoke that we really, really want to champion and become a real green lung of that parish as well. And certainly at the end, uh, you don't need me to say it, we just, just had a very long debate and conversations about parking congestion and really using you know, some of the traffic regulation orders to benefit the community. So again, this is very much a sort of plan on a page. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it doesn't go into too much detail, but it sets where our thinking is as a committee and what we really seek to do um, across the next year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Do councillors have any questions? Councillor Marsh. Yeah, I'm going to ask a question which Councillor Parker Jones has brought up before in our team's meetings, and I agree with her. We have an issue with the colour um, of this presentation because it isn't DDA compliant or not suitable for those with disabilities. So actually my question would be to democratic services because I feel quite strongly that we shouldn't be doing something that isn't suitable for people in our community with disabilities um, just because each area has to have a different colour and I would ask democratic services to arrange for the colour to be changed so that it is suitable for those with disabilities please. So on that point, Councillor Marsh, um, we did have a meeting about accessibility earlier today because we are doing a lot of work with our website and our papers as they are um, uploaded. I don't actually have anything to do with the local area action plans. They are produced by our communications team, um, but we do know there are certain colours obviously that are a problem with people that have visual impairments that aren't suitable. Um, I can go to, we can speak to comms and make sure they're not used. I do appreciate every area has a different colour and we are stripping out a lot of colours from a lot of our council papers, um, but we will make sure that, that we do do something about it because it isn't fair and it is actually the law now that we have to make sure that anything published doesn't have colours in it that are a problem. Um, so I will make sure that from now on we do make sure that we are better about this sort of thing. Thank you. I'd be really grateful and I realise you're not responsible, but I think that we do want to have this changed and as a committee I think we're all in agreement that we object to this colour and we do want to be compliant, so we'd be grateful for that. Thank you. Can I just come back in response to that? Um, I remember when Councillor Parker Jones did raise this last year. Now, I, I, I don't know, it's not my, my background, so I, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I did raise it with our comms team and they actually said it was compliant. So I think um, there's, there's two things here. If it's not compliant, I, I don't know, it's not my thing. I just said I did raise it on the path last time. So I think the first thing I'll do is to check it. But I think on the second part, even if it isn't and you're unhappy with it, it is a small thing to change. So I'm, I'm happy to change it. But I'll just say that I did check that on because I know if you've raised it before. I did go to the effort of checking it. But um, for some reason, you know, they said so. It's not my background, I can't comment. <laughs> right. I've suddenly gone quiet. Um, any more questions? Yeah, Luke. Parker Jones. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the only the, the problem with the colour is contrast. So for people who have visual impairments, white and yellow together is not a good contrast. That That's what that's about. Um, but I don't uh, that was just to reinforce what Michelle is saying. I just wanted to make sure it was clear. So, um, yes, and I know I and I'll keep raising it that, that, that contrast is a problem. <laughs> OK, any other um, questions? Do we it's have just a one, oh, Pasadine, sorry. Yeah. Um, again, it's, it's, it's going along the same thing here. Um, I'm totally bemused as to why each area has got to have a different colour. It's just the document <laughs> that gets put on the website. People only look at one at a time. What is, what is the relevance of a different colour? <laughs> That's all I have to say on it. I just, I'm just really puzzled. Can I leave someone else to answer that question? 
Thank you for the question. Show me your answer that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure you're going to get an answer, Shrey. I could find out for you, but so uh, yeah. Now, um, I have had people on chat, so let's just see. Um, is it um, Councillor Parker Jones? Did you want to speak? Can't hear you. He's muted. I think. I think Councillor Marsh was actually before me asking to speak, but ah, I, do, right. I do want to speak, but I, I, I believe Councillor Marsh crept in yes. before me. You're, 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 you, I think you're right. Thank you, Councillor Parker-Jones. Um, really, it's, I want to make two observations about this document. Firstly, I'd like to thank our local area manager for the amount of work he's done um, and the way he helps us and supports us behind the scenes. He is the mover and shaker, so thank you for that, um, Andy. We do appreciate all your hard work on this. Um, and I know putting together a plan like this isn't very easy. And um, as a relatively new councillor, this has been quite a steep learning curve. And I believe passionately that we are here to serve our community. Um, so for me, number number two, um, so, well, one and two, the climate change and the new development is so frightfully important. We have a lot of development and we want to be doing it sympathetically and correctly. And I feel that we do need to be looking after our environment and looking after our countryside and our wildlife, which is why it was even more infuriating. And thank you, Councillor Caldry, for making reference to it at the start of this, because if we as EBC councillors are fighting to do this for our community and Hampshire County Council come across and, and walk roughshod across us and chop down the trees that we haven't given permission to be removed. It's not acceptable and it makes it very hard for us to do our job, which is about protecting our community and protecting our wildlife. Um, and I, I do take offence when members of the public are pointing fingers at EBC councillors, um, accusing us of chopping down trees that we had no knowledge about the fact that this was being done by Hampshire or for Hampshire County Council. Um, so I do I just, just want to raise a point that we have agreed that these are the things that we are working for um, and that are important for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marsh. Councillor Parker Jones. Um, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to say actually I'm really pleased with the direction this has taken and that we've really elevated the climate and environmental emergency. And, uh, and I can think of, uh, well, a quarter of a million pounds that can really do a lot of good, <laughs> a lot of good in helping. I us. wonder where that came from. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea, Chair. I've just plucked the figure. Oh, no, um, I, I think it's, I, I do think uh, we are all absolutely united on this that you know what what is the good of everything else we do if if our world is going to not be left in a better place for our young people i mean why are we here if we can't answer that so i am really pleased with the direct this um has taken and i'm really pleased with what's at the fore and yes that money i think could really help us to achieve that very first goal and aim so um yes i'm really pleased thank you right let's see who else is on that list i've lost the conversation um is it yeah, just there, is, there is nobody else after councillor parker jones to debate thank you very much so we finished the debate um uh we don't have to have a roll call on this can we just unmute and uh say yes we accept it even despite the color Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So there's Agreed. sorry, is there there's a review of the colour, is there? Something yes, I will, I, will, I, will, I will look into that. Thank you, Andy. Right. Um, then we move to planning appeals. Um, I don't know, have we been do, do you want to go over to what the planning appeals were, Andy? Or you, because we went to note them, so I think we ought to just have a formal uh, reference to what they are. Or is that yeah, a fast call? If Andy hasn't got them to hand, I do. Could you just tell what they are? 
Um, it's Mortimer's Farm, Mortimer's Lane, Fair Oak, Eastleigh for the appeal against the council's refusal of planning commission for alterations and conversion of existing barns to form four dwellings and construction of seven dwellings following demolition of modern agricultural buildings, which is a delegated decision. That appeal has been lodged and that is the only one this time. Right, well, it's, I'm very glad that it, uh, it was um, refused because it was going to go ahead if the local area, uh, the, the long, the dead strategic growth option was going ahead because then it would have been appropriate. But as we've all um, committed to ob observing the death of the strategic growth option, we must comply with it. So um, there we are. So um, anyone got any objections to noting that? No, so that ends the meeting. Councillors, thank you very much for coming. I'd also like to thank all the um, the staff, even those who've just listened. God, it must have been boring. Sorry. Um, but listen to make sure that we didn't make any terrible mistakes. Uh, if any of the members of the public managed to last out, well, thank you very much for doing so, because it was um, it, it was actually good work, but it is hard work for, for people who are not actually involved. So thank you. And um, good night to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.